Thank you very much. Um, so we're now going to talk about uh, um, the application of contrast enhanced ultrasound in the setting of pediatric abdominal trauma. So um, the purpose of this presentation is mainly to show you how useful it is in the setting of pediatric trauma. I'll briefly touch base on some implications um, of repeated radiation exposure in children following uh, trauma and we'll also then go a little bit more into detail in the discussion and review of the main CUS findings of the most frequent types of solid abdominal injuries occurring in children. So briefly on radiation exposure, so the, the main initial drive to develop CUS in the context of pediatric trauma was a need to try and find alternative imaging uh, modalities uh, to CT, uh, which as we know comes with quite a lot of uh, um, uh, radiation burden in such a young population and the lifetime risk of developing a malignancy following uh, a radiation exposure increases the younger the children are. This is a study from The Lancet and which looked at the implications of radiation expo repeated radiation exposure in children and they showed that there was an increase in the development of brain tumors in this population. However, I also want you to be aware of the fact that there is a, a new interest coming out in the literature looking into radiation exposure in children and uh, there is a group of uh, radiologists who believe that we should um, start looking again into the ALARA concept because uh, um, it may not be as uh, strongly applicable to children. So this is just to let you know that there is out there in the literature um, uh, a few papers and letters to the editor which looked into uh, this and, and so the practice may change slowly over the uh, next uh, coming uh, year. Having said all this, um, imaging trauma in children still relies heavily upon CT and CT is still the gold standard to image these children and uh, especially when they are hemodynamically stable and they've undergone a high energy multi-trauma and this allows a rapid triage and, and, and reduced morbidity and mortality as well. However, as you all know and as we've just said, uh, CT comes with the risks first of all radiation exposure as we mentioned mm. and also the patient needs to be cooperative and uh, stable and transportable and, um, and it needs uh, administration of iodine contrast. So what are the alternatives to CT out there? So we looked at fast scan but as you know fast has a relatively low sensitivity even to detect the free fluid and lower for detecting organ injury. Also, a third of traumatic lesions will present without a hemoperitoneum, so you are at risk of missing these injuries. And FAST was um, developed around the management of adults' patients, so it may not be as good in managing pediatric patients. At the same time, even a normal baseline ultrasound, even in the most experienced hands, it comes with um, uh, low sensitivity values for traumatic lesions uh, and that's often because they are isoechoic to the normal parenchyma so there are limitations there. So we, there is a need for an imaging modality um, which is uh, superior to um, baseline ultrasound and it can filter cases which don't necessarily need a CT scan and this is because more and more the management of these pediatric traumas is conservative as it is in adults but even more so in the pediatric population so you need a very accurate assessment of the injuries that you're going to manage. And that's where CUS comes into the picture and the EPSAM has um, produced recommendations in the use of CUS in the context of pediatric trauma and the new guidelines are coming out soon and it is recommended for the use in minor or localized wounds uh, in the context of low energy injuries to delineate uncertain CT findings and in the follow-up. And the advantages of these are that it comes without radiation, it's very time friendly as every ultrasound scan is, it can be done at the bedside and it's very cost effective. 
So in, uh, in the context of pediatric trauma, CUS is the first choice in many European centers, and when you look at the performance values, are very close to those of CT. And it gives you a very accurate definition of the injury that you're looking at, and it tells you whether there is an extension to the capsule or presence of vascular injuries. Also, uh, some of you being a purely intravascular contrast agent, um, it can identify very subtle vascular alterations and uh, the presence of active bleeding. And it can guide, ultimately, the management towards either surgery or conservative management. So one of the first papers in the literature that looked into this is a paper uh, dated back in 2008 from Valentino and all in Italy. And they looked at 27 patients, uh, and they had very good preliminary results showing that CUS um, was a good non-invasive modality that in, um, uh, improves the sensitivity of normal baseline ultrasound and has performance values um, the same as CT. So since then, many, many more papers have come out in the literature, and this is one of the most recent ones, again, from an Italian group, from Miele, and they looked at 73 children, and in all of these, the CUS identified all 67 um, uh, patients with parenchymal lesions. And also what comes out from this paper is that CUS identified important prognostic factors such as parenchymal active bleeding and partial devascularization. And they've come up with an algorithm um, which says that pretty much every pediatric patient that comes through the doors, they do it with a blank abdominal trauma, they do a CUS, if it is negative, the patient can be discharged, and if it is positive, they can go ahead and do a um, contrast-enhanced CT, follow that up uh, by CUS, serial CUS. So how do we perform CUS in our center? We always have a dual screen. We inject a, a um, bolus of uh, son of you through a, a peripheral IV access. The doses range is normally in children between 0.6 and 2.4 um, milliliters, depending on the size of the child. Uh, we always have our timer on, and we record simulate and also store static images uh, in the meantime. So just an overview of the main uh, organ injuries that we may find in children. Starting from the spleen is the commonest site of blunt abdominal trauma in children. You have to remember that there is a long arterial phase with a zebra pattern enhancement, not to be confused with a laceration, but then you can rely on a very long late phase to look for any real uh, parenchymal injury. And you can get all sorts of injuries um, from shattering of the spleen um, to hematomas, and you may not have a hemoperitoneum if the capsule is intact, and uh, vice versa, you can have retroperitoneal blood if the injury extends to the splenic hymen. So these are a couple of examples, a little girl who had a fall. You can see that there is a heterogeneous uh, area in the spleen, which after contrast corresponds to the area of the lac laceration, which is shown as a lack of enhancement. This is back in the day when we used to do CT at the same time, and you can see how the picture matches perfectly. This is another example of a teenager boy who uh, came in with multiple stab wounds. On initial B-mode ultrasound, we couldn't really see uh, the lesions, but you, as you can see on the video, when you inject contrast, you can see the lacerations really easily and really clearly. Um, and this is, again, the comparison with the CT scan. Uh, this is another boy who fell while skating, and you obviously can see that the spleen is very abnormal on the demon ultrasound, but then your question is, how much of this tissue is actually viable? Is this a completely devascularized spleen or not? And as you can see on the video, there's hardly any enhancement post-injection of contrast, and, this, and, and as you can see on some of these static pictures, and this was a completely, uh, nearly completely uh, devascularized spleen, so the patient underwent a splenectomy following this. Um, hepatic trauma, uh, here you need to focus on an arterial phase initially to look for any active bleeding and in the late phase for lacerations. 
more often than not, the posterior segments of the right lobe are injured, and lacerations present normally as linear or branching hypopoic areas which do not um, enhance following contrast administration. And you can get subcapsular hematomas which may uh, compress the underlying parenchyma. And again, if the laceration extends to the capsule, then you're going to have also a hemoperitoneum. These are a couple of examples. This is a, um, a, scan, a child who came in after a handlebar injury, and on the BMOD scan, uh, there was nothing to be seen. But you can see after giving contrast how even the very subtle linear lacerations can be shown really easy. And you know then that this is a grade one laceration, and the patient can be uh, discharged safely. This is another example of an hepatic uh, laceration. This was another stabbing. And again, from the video, you can see that following contrast, the area of the laceration does not enhance at all. And you can delineate it really easily um, uh, without any need for any further imaging. Again, this was back in the day when we used to do CT. And this is the corresponding lesion on the CT scan. Uh, also, uh, likewise, you can see hematomas really easily, and you can distinguish easily intraparenchymal hematomas from subcapsular hematomas, as in this example. And as you can see on the CT scan, you can see uh, that these are perfectly matching pictures. Renal trauma. Um, you have to remember when scanning the kidneys, uh, um, two things mainly. One is that you need a reduced dose um, because of very, very heavy arterial enhancement, deeper structures may be obscured uh, by the intense cortical enhancement. And then the other thing to remember is that some of you does not get excreted through the collecting system, through um, the renal collecting system, so you will not be able to depict injuries uh, to the chemical cell system. You can get injuries from direct impact resulting in parenchymal injuries, or from deceleration, normally resulting in a collecting system and vascular injuries, or you can get hematomas as well. This is an example of a very small contusion following an RTA. Um, it was very difficult to tell from the normal baseline scan, but then after giving contrast, you can see this small area of contusion in the renal parenchyma. Um, this is a gunshot wound, which um, wasn't quite shown on the BMOD scan, but again, following administration of contrast, we could delineate the, lash, the laceration going through the mid to lower pole of the kidney, and this is how it looked like on the CT scan. This is an example of a three-year-old boy who sadly uh, was playing in his father's gym, and a uh, very heavy dumbbell fell on his abdomen. So he came in with the acute abdomen, with obviously abdominal pain, and they did an ultrasound scan, which wasn't really helpful to start with, uh, and a CT scan, which looked as if uh, the kidney was completely devascularized uh, following the truncation of the left renal artery. But then when we did a CUS, we could see very few seconds following administration of contrast that um, uh, this patient had acute cortical necrosis with complete lack of enhancement of uh, the renal cortex, as you can see really easily on the CUS. And then the patient underwent also an MRI scan. And this is to show you how the picture correlates perfectly well uh, with the CUS. So there wasn't really a need to perform the MR, uh, but this is to show you how well the picture correlates with to our findings. Uh, pancreatic trauma, it's relatively uncommon in children and it's rarely isolated. Normally it's associated with other injuries and you have to remember that trauma is the leading cause of pancreatitis in children and you can get different injuries depending on the mechanism of injury. So um, a compression of, of the gland against the vertebral column normally results in a neck and body injury, whereas a blow to the flank normally results in a head or tail of the pancreas injury. And you have to be aware of the fact that they can get complications such as food collections and later on pseudocysts. So this is a couple of examples where you can actually see the fracture of the BMO and you can confirm it here on the following administration of contrast. 
And this is another example where a few weeks down the line where the patient, this patient had developed a um, large pseudocyst. And you can see following the administration of contrast that there is a gap, a, um, a transaction of the pancreatic duct there, which keeps feeding into this uh, pseudocyst. Very briefly on adrenal trauma, again, these are very rare um, uh, as an isolated uh, uh, injury. They're normally part of multi-organ trauma. And you can get typically hematomas as rounded enlargement or displacement of the gland. And uh, it's really useful here, CUS, normally uh, maybe as a differential diagnosis with incidental adrenal lesions. Obviously, this is less relevant in children than in adults, but it's still a very useful tool. And I'll show you a couple of examples here where you get still some enhancement of the adrenal gland, but then part of it is not enhanced. This is a hematoma. And again, following contrast, there is a complete lack of enhancement. And similarly, in this case, when you give contrast, the hematoma simply will not enhance. Uh, a, a field where we use CUS very much these days is follow-ups of traumas, and we looked at a series of patients who presented um, init with initial plant abdominal trauma to the liver and spleen, and we looked at how we followed up uh, uh, pseudoaneurysms. So typically, we follow up a liver injury on day five of occurrence and a splenic renal injury on day seven. And, and, and this is very useful because repeated CT scans can be avoided very easily. This is an example of a resolving liver laceration um, following a fall. You can see the, the initial injury there with the laceration through the liver extending through the capsule. And two weeks later, the, the injury has started healing and is much less conspicuous. This is a patient who had an RTA, a very young boy, eight-year-old, who came to us a week following his trauma. And when we gave contrast, we've identified his uh, pseudoaneurysm of the, the splenic artery, um, which was then embolized. Embolized, giving its size and its vicinity to the capsule, we still embolize uh, some of these um, pseudoaneurysms. Um, again, Another example of a pseudoaneurysm, but this time to show you how it can be helpful even following embolization of uh, um, pseudoaneurysms, you can use CUS to follow them up and make sure that there is no um, residual enhancement of the nidus. And all you can see following contrast is a hyperemia around the embolized area and nothing more. So you're, you're happy that you're, um, you've achieved the effective embolization of the pseudoaneurysm. So in conclusion, we've seen that CUS is a very safe and radiation-free imaging modality to investigate trauma in children. Uh, when you look at the literature, the performance values are really close to those of CT. And in our institution, we have completely substituted a CT in the follow-up of solid organ injuries with CUS. And more and more these days, we are using CUS as first-line investigation in these pediatric patients where a CT scan is not warranted. Um, thank you very much for your attention. And I do invite all of you to come to London for our fourth International Pediatric Consonant Science uh, Ultrasound course. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Dr. Deganello. Um, but I'm just going to, because we, we have short of time, I'm just going to ask Dr. Deganello one question, and that's how do the parents uh, accept this technique? Are they quite receptive for it? They're very receptive. They're re really very happy. More and more parents do read. Uh, obviously, as you, we all know, they, they Google things. So they are more and more concerned and more aware of radiation exposures in children. So every time we mention these as an alternative uh, to CT, they're all very happy. I've never had a parent refusing a scan. And we use it also for uh, focal lesions in children. And I've never had any parents refusing it. And they're all very happy. They will take it really gladly. OK, thank you very much.